welcome back to the Enchanted Wood. We've got to chapter 8. Are you excited, Fade? To see what happened to Joe? Okay. Moonface was most upset to see Joe disappear. I told him not to. I told him, he groaned. You didn't, sobbed Franny. Your mouth was so full of toffee and all you could say was ooble, ooble, ooble. And how could we know what that meant? Where's Joe now? asked Beth, quite pale with shock. Yes, indeed, where was Joe? Someone had lifted him right off the ladder, up into the land of ice and snow. And there, strangely enough, the moon and the sun were in the sky at the same time, one at one side and the other opposite, both shining with a pale light. Joe shivered, for it was very cold. He looked up to see what had lifted him off the ladder, and he saw in front of him a big, strange creature. A snowman! He was just like the snowmen Joe had so often made in the winter time, round and fat and white, with an old hat stuck on his head and a carrot for a nose. Oh, this is luck! said the snowman in a soft, snowy sort of voice. I've been standing by that hole for days, waiting for a seal to come up, and you came. Oh, said Joe, remembering that seals came up to breathe through holes in the ice. That wasn't a water hole, that was a hole that led down to the faraway tree. I want to go back, please. The hole has closed up, said the snowman. Joe looked. And to his great dismay, he saw that a thick layer of ice had formed over the hole, so thick that he knew perfectly well he could never break through it. Whatever shall I do now? he said. Just what I tell you, said the snowman with a grin. Oh, this is splendid! In this dull and silent land, there is nothing but polar bears and seals and penguins. I have often wanted someone to talk to. How did you get here? asked Joe, wrapping his coat firmly round him, for he was bitterly cold. Ah, <sighs> said the snowman, that is a long story. I was made by some children long ago, and when they had finished me, they laughed at me and threw stones at me to break me up. So that night I crept away here and made myself king. But what's the good of being king if you've only bears and things to talk to? What I really want is a good servant who can talk my language, and now you've come. But I don't want to be your servant said joe oh nonsense said the snowman and he gave joe a push that nearly sent him over then on big flat snow feet he moved forward to where there was a low wall of snow make me a good house he said i don't know how to said joe who just cut blocks of this stiff icy snow and build them up one on top of another said the snowman when you've finished, I'll give you a warm coat to wear, then you won't shiver so much. Joe didn't see that he could do anything but obey, so he picked up a shovel that was lying by the wall and began to cut big bricks of the frozen snow. When he had cut about twenty, he stopped and placed them one on top of another till one side of the round house was made. Then he began to cut snow bricks again wondering all the time how in the world he would ever be able to escape from this strange land. Joe had often built little snow houses of soft snow in his garden at home during the winter. Now he had made a big one, with proper snow blocks, as hard as bricks. He quite enjoyed it, though he did wish the girls were there too. When he had finished it and made a nice rounded roof, the snowman came shuffling up. Very nice, he said. Very nice indeed. I can just about get in, I think. He squeezed his big snowy body inside and threw out a thick coat for Joe, made of wool as soft and as white as the snow all around. 
Joe put it on very thankfully. Then he tried to squeeze in after the snowman, for he wanted to be out of the cold, icy wind. But he was so squashed between the snowman and the walls of the snow house that he couldn't breathe. Oh, don't push so, said the snowman disagreeably. Move up. I can't, gasped poor Joe. He felt quite certain that he would be pushed right out of the snow hut through a hole in the wall. Just then there came a curious grunt at the doorway. The snowman called out once more. Is that you, Furry? Take this boy to your home under the ice. He's a nuisance here. He keeps squatting me. Joe looked up to see who Furry was, and he saw a great white bear looking in. The bear had a stupid but kind look on his face. Oomph, said the bear and pulled Joe out into the open air. Joe knew there was no use to struggle. Nobody could get away, get away from a bear as big as that, but the bear was certainly very kindly. Um, he said to Joe with a loud grunting noise. I don't know what you mean, said Joe. The bear said no more. He just took Joe along with him, half carrying the little boy, for Joe found the way very slippery indeed. They came to a hole that led under the ice and snow. The bear pushed Joe down it, and to Joe's enormous surprise, he found that there was a big room underneath, with five bears there, big and little. It was quite warm there too. Joe was astonished, for there was no heat out of course. Oomph, said the bears politely. Oomph, said Joe. That pleased the bears very much indeed. They came and shook paws with Joe very solemnly and oomphed all over him. Joe liked the look of the bears much more than he liked the look of the snowman. He thought perhaps they might help him to escape from this silly land of ice and snow. Could you tell me the way back to the faraway tree? he asked. The bears politely and clearly. The bears looked at one another and then oomphed at Joe. It was quite clear that they didn't understand a word he said. Oh, never mind, said Joe with a sigh, and made up his mind to put up with things until he could see a way to escape. The snowman was a great nuisance. No sooner did Joe settle himself down for a nap, leaning his head against the big warm body of a bear, then there came a call from the snow house. Hey boy, come here and play dominoes with me. So Joe had to go and play dominoes, and as the snowman wouldn't let him come into the house because he said he was squashed, Joe had to sit at the doorway and play, and he nearly froze to bits. Then another time, just as he was eating a nice bit of fried fish that one of the bears had kindly cooked for him, the snowman shouted to him to come and make him a window in his house and Joe had to hurry up and cut a sheet of clear ice to fit into one side of the snow house for a window. Really, that snowman was a perfect nuisance. I wish to goodness I'd never stepped into the silly land, thought Joe a hundred times. It's a good thing the bears are so nice to me. I only wish they could say something else besides oomph. Joe wondered what Beth and Franny were doing. Were they upset when he didn't come back? Would they go home and tell their father and mother what had happened? And Beth and Franny were upset. It had been dreadful to see poor Joe disappear through a cloud like that. Moonface looked very solemn too. He could speak quite well now that he had swallowed all his toffee. We must rescue him, he said, his face shining like the full moon. How? asked the girls. I must think, said Moonface, and he shut his eyes. His head swelled up with his thinking. He opened his eyes and nodded his head. We'll go to Goldilocks and the three bears, he said. The bears know the land of ice and snow. She might be able to help Joe that way. But where does Goldilocks live? asked Beth in wonder. I thought she was just a fairy tale. Oh, good gracious, no, said Moonface. Come on, we'll have to catch the train. 
What train? asked Franny in astonishment. Oh, wait and see, said Moonface. Hurry now, go down the slippery slip and wait for me at the bottom. Let's see what happens in the next chapter. Hope you're enjoying it so far.